Hello and welcome to the latest in our series of live career webinars brought to you by the HOP platform. So HOP stands for the Hertfordshire Opportunities Portal. It's a website that we hope all young people in schools, particularly those of you in and around Hertfordshire, will be familiar with because it's a website that will help give you lots of careers inspiration and information to help you make the next very, very important decisions in your journeys uh, from school, possibly into university and then out into the working world. So today's session is a little bit different from some of the 50 that we've done so far before. So rather than concentrating on one particular job, we're going to concentrate on one particular employer. And we've picked an employer who is located smack bang in the middle of Hertfordshire. And that is a company that you will all be very, very familiar with. And that is Tesco. So we're not going to talk about the jobs in store today, which I'm sure you'll all be familiar with, I'm sure you've all been in a Tesco store at some point, um, but we're going to think about some of the jobs that people do at Tesco, um, so principally those people who work in their, in their headquarters, which are in Welling Garden City, which is say, right in the middle of Hertfordshire. Over 4,000 people work on that site in Welling Garden City, and there's also another site, a big office down in central London as well. Just to give you a bit of context though, so Tesco employs 360,000 people around the world. Um, they are Britain's leading retailer with sales of over 52 billion in 2021. Uh, but just to put that into context, Amazon generated sales of about 13 billion, so about a quarter of that. So they're pretty big players. The sixth largest company in the UK and um, about the 250th largest employer in the whole world. And so they are based right in the middle of Hertfordshire. So it's somewhere, no matter where you are in the county, whether you're in Welling Garden City itself, or even if you're slightly further afield, um, that is very accessible to you. And it may well be somewhere that you go to work one day. So just to explain how this webinar is gonna work, we are gonna meet our panelists very shortly and they will tell you a little bit about their jobs and we'll discuss what they do and we'll discuss a little bit about what it's like to work for Tesco, how they got into the jobs they're doing at the moment. Um, then hopefully some of you guys might have some questions that you want to ask. So for those of you that are watching this session live right now, you can submit your questions. You do that on the questions tab on your dashboard. If you click on the questions tab, it opens out a text box. The text box comes through, it'll only come through to me uh, and then I can direct it to whichever panelists you want to answer that question. So may take the opportunity to ask them anything that you want to know about their job, about what it's like working for Tesco in general. Um, and hopefully that will be really, really useful for you. This session is being recorded. So if you can't stay right the way through to the end of it, it will be available on our hot uh, YouTube channel. So you can see that on your screen at the moment, how you access that. Um, and you can there also see all the previous webinars that we've recorded over the last couple of years as well. So do take the opportunity to, um, to ask any questions and to have a look at our YouTube site afterwards. But what we're going to do first of all then is I'm going to introduce you to our four panellists who have given up their time this afternoon to come and share with you their own particular journeys and to tell you a little bit more about what they do for Tesco. So first of all, if I could introduce, I'm going to do this in no particular order, I'll do it as you see on the screen. So first of all, let me say good afternoon to Elena. Tell us a little bit more about you, please, Elena. Hi, um, I'm Elena. I joined Tesco in September, and since then I've been working in the space team, which is part of supply chain. Okay, thank you very much. We'll certainly delve more into that as we go on. Uh, good afternoon, Tom. Hey, so yeah, I'm Tom. I joined in September as well. So I'm on the Technology Product Management Graduate Scheme, which is kind of a two-year programme where you get to experience all sorts of stuff around tech. So right now, for example, we're doing a labs placement where literally you have eight weeks to come up with any idea about literally anything. We're looking at some metaverse stuff at the moment and then kind of build a solution. So it's a bit like The Apprentice in a way. Um, but yeah, that's me. Fantastic. Thank you, Tom. Um, good afternoon, Kian. Hi, I'm... Um... I'm Kian, Kian Oliver. Uh, I'm a finance graduate at Tesco. Uh, I've, I joined Tesco in September 2019, so I've been there a little longer. Um, started on the apprenticeship scheme, and last September I started on the finance graduate scheme, which I'll delve into a little bit more. Yep, now we'll, we'll look forward to hearing your experiences on, on, on that, Kian. And good afternoon, Zena. Hi, 
Good afternoon. So my name is Nina and I'm taking part in the graduate scheme and I am in software engineering. Okay, thank you very much for those introductions. So um, this webinar is titled Careers at Tesco, it's not just stacking shelves. I think if you if you ask a lot of people what they jobs they think people do at Tesco, that's probably the first thing that they come up with. Um, and whilst not every job, in fact, not many jobs are actually around stacking shelves in Tesco, nearly everything that all of these guys do, and in fact, all the 360,000 colleagues around the world do, will be related to making sure that there is product on the shelves, whether that is physically or whether that is virtually. So what I'm going to ask each of our panelists to do now is just explain a little bit to you about how the job they do, how it relates to your perhaps experiences as a customer, going into Tesco. So first of all, um, Zena, we had this conversation just before we went on air. Um, and if you'd like to explain a little bit about what you do on a day-to-day -day basis and say how that relates to how people watching this as customers of Tesco might consume. Uh, yes, so the shelf, our theme is stacking, is a virtual one because I'm working on the grocery ordering website. Uh, I am responsible for the um, interface where people are able to pay for their groceries. Okay, all right. So, I mean, tell us what does sort of a, a day in your life look like, Zena? So I know you said you're actually at the um, at the office down in London today in, in Farringdon, but tell us what does the average day look like for you? Um, usually, we come to my, uh, with my team in the office like twice a week, and uh, we've got a meeting in the morning where we discuss what we were doing the previous day and what are our day, uh, plans for that given day. Then uh, we are doing lots of coding uh, and anytime and it's uh, sometimes collaborative, sometimes uh, we are getting on with our own codes and also we've got meetings to discuss like what to work on next week. And also we've got sessions every two weeks where we can see what uh, other things in the organization where we are is working on. It's a very, very spectacular like a demo of what others are about. Yeah, so I mean, your job title is um, a technology software engineer, which so to me is a bit of a layman, is, is, is an IT role. Um, but you were saying the way that customers pay for their shopping when they do it online, I mean, that's something that you and your team are, are, are organizing. So tell us a little bit about your background in software engineering then, because I, I know that wasn't what you always envisaged you were going to do with your career. Oh yes, it's a bit interesting because my degree is in teaching preschool. I graduated in 2015 in Hungary. Then uh, I was working, I moved to the UK and I was working in a nursery with babies. And I actually loved it, but I started to have some like health issues because of picking up children, moving around equipment is actually straining on the body. So I was wondering, is it something I will be able to do for the next like, I don't know, 35 years? And I realized maybe it's better to change while I'm still young. So I actually have no formal qualification in software engineering and I'm very really lucky because uh, when I went on Tesco's career site, it just said that uh, it doesn't, you don't have to have a degree in computer science, any degree is fine as long as you have one. So I was like, okay, let's see if they are serious about this condition, about like, not having to have a computer science degree and they are, because here I am. So I mostly start thought, uh, actually, uh, it's, um, I think if you are thinking about teaching it yourself, this is one of the best career paths because there's so much like online resources available freely. And um, also what I was thinking is that uh, if you are thinking of your career, then my advice is that choose something that uh, can, if you, it aligns with your plans, life plans. For example, I was always considering moving abroad, which I did. However, like uh, it depends on a country if they accept your degree for certain professions. So, for example, education has that limitation that some countries say that uh, we, we are not going to recognize a degree here, if you need to look on for another course that complements it. However, like the software engineering is like basically the only thing that matters is the skills you have. So they don't uh, insist on like uh, regulations. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, all right. So, I mean, it's a great lesson for, for any of you watching this at the moment that the career that you think you're going to do, or even the career that you start to do, yeah. may not necessarily be the one that you that you end up going into. And if there's a great company like Tesco um, who are there and available to offer a whole range of different opportunities, then see that makes that transition so much more straightforward. Um, if I move over to Tom, who, who, who assures me that he scribbles on the background, there aren't any trade secrets on there. Um, but Tom, just explain to everyone, what is that board that's behind you? What are you working on at the moment? And so how yeah. does it relate to a customer's experience when they come into Tesco? 
Yeah, sure. So I, I kind of touched upon it a bit earlier, but we're, we're in this kind of labs team. So I'm currently working with three other grads very closely. Um, one's actually a software engineer, um, one's kind of similar to me, a product person, and another one's kind of a program person. So they kind of handle like the project management side of things in a way. Um, and yeah, so we what's behind me is just a load of notes and kind of brainstorming and make, I'm in a big meeting room at the moment um, where we've got kind of screens everywhere and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, a load of notes coming up with different ideas. Um, so our, our kind of top three ideas, if you like, one is about creating a virtual shopping experience in the metaverse. Um, one is about repurposing food waste with smoothie bars in store. Um, and another one is around, um, so you could take a picture of like food or go on social media, you know how people post their food to their stories and then have a kind of machine learning algorithm that could be like, okay, we know what this recipe is, these are the ingredients you need and add it automatically to your basket. So very varied, um, kind of all over the place. It's one of the, my favorite things about Tesco, it's very collaborative, kind of doing something different every day. Um, so yeah, I hope that answers your question about what's behind me. <laughs> yeah, well, no, it's, it's fascinating to think about. You know, these are all ideas that are in, in that are intended to enhance the customer's experience. Yeah, and sure. I'm sure you know everybody watching this at the moment will have or will be having some experiences in Tesco where you know you and your team uh, are out there at the moment to try and make ways to make our life easier when we when, when we want to go into Tesco. Um, yeah, and so, yeah, everything. That's really fascinating. And all of them stemmed from, I mean, we, we're just graduate teams. So like we, we kind of obviously just experiment with things, but all of it stemmed from kind of genuine customer problems. Um, so we kind of started off by doing kind of interviews and finding out what's important to customers and stuff like that. So yeah, I guess, although it's varied, it all comes back down to that kind of customer experience. For sure, for sure, okay. Um, um, Kian, let me come over to you then and your role as a, as a finance graduate. I want yeah. you to tell me a little bit more about your journey into Tesco and through, because I know you, you've come through an apprenticeship fairly recently as yeah, well. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about what your day to day looks like. Yeah, of course. Um, I'll give you a bit of a whistle stop tour of how I got to where I am. Uh, and then I can talk about what I do day to day. Um, so I started with Tesco in September 2019 after finishing my A-levels. Um, so I came in at 18 years old. Um, on the apprenticeship scheme with one other apprentice um, so that was quite quite interesting coming into such a big company at that kind of hour. I, I never thought it would really be possible um, but to be honest like you, you don't feel any different and you kind of the finance schemes are yearly rotation so I started off working in a um, internal audit team which gave me a great idea of what the business does uh, and then I moved into like some product finance as well so essentially it was the analysis of how the products are doing on the shelf so kind of ties back into your point um, and yeah so that's a two-year scheme and you study to the level of a certified accountant through that apprenticeship scheme and luckily I was offered a, a graduate position I think that's kind of going to be like Tesco's standard is if you if you perform well on the apprenticeship scheme you do well with your exams you can be like leveled up into the graduate scheme and that's without a degree essentially because you're working yeah. towards a chartered, chartered accountant so through SEMA which is management accounting and um yeah came onto the graduate scheme still studying um I'm currently working in property acquisition so it's okay. sort of a step behind a step before the shelves because it's, it's essentially identifying opportunity um investment appraisals on potential new convenience stores for Tesco so essentially standing as a, a business partner to the, the property team um, running investment appraisals and understanding what the opportunity looks like across the UK for, for Tesco and growth of, of convenience stores essentially. Sure so, so let, let me just touch on that you say with property acquisition so essentially what you're saying there is that Every time a new Tesco, whether it's an probably an express store or whether it's the you know the smaller convenience store, that's yeah. because someone in your team has thought, do you know what, this would be a really good place or this is somewhere we really need to have another store. Yeah, yeah, I don't really think about it like that, but that is essentially what it what it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, Tesco have kind of set out these new strategic drivers, and one of them is um, being the e easily the most convenient. 
So that kind of has delved into my world as, as a big growth agenda in, in the convenience space and um, trying to stay competitive and, and hold on to that market share. So there's um, definitely a big appetite for growth, which is uh, keeps my, my role quite interesting. Yeah, no, absolutely. Okay, and then or, Elaine, the same question to you, really. Principally, tell us a little bit about what you do in your role on a day-to-day -day basis and say, how does that relate to what happens in a Tesco store? So I work in space. Now, that's not about going into space. It's about how we plan out our stores and where we put things. And contrary to maybe popular belief, we don't want customers to have to go right to the back to get what they want. We want them to come in and get exactly what they want. And for each store, depending on where it is in the UK, you know, depending on the population, if they're more young people, more older people, to be able to get exactly what they want in that store. So we work on floor plans and we floor plan every single store in the UK, constantly changing and updating with all the data that we have. And you know other things like legislation so sometimes we have to push the chocolate bars away from the checkouts things like that so space and supply chain is really at the heart of everything Tesco is and once we you know have set the space up for a certain um, product so we're going to give this amount of space to beans then we can talk to the buyers and then they'll go and get the Heinz beans from the buyers and decide how many they then need to send to each store so it's really we tie in a lot with what's happening in stores we talk to them constantly and we're getting feedback from them about how they find the space that we've given them and what they think would be better um, so it's a real back and forth it's not just head office deciding what the store should be doing no okay i mean take us behind the fourth wall here because i'm really fascinated by this and just the fact that the stores aren't assembled in a random order there's a it's kind of a reason and a logic behind it i don't know if anything particularly comes to mind but is there anything that you learn or that you found out about that you thought wow that's really interesting what that is why crisps are on the aisle behind the cereals or is, is there anything that comes to mind that perhaps you've uncovered yourself or yeah so we have principles that we try and work to because of how we think people want to shop so you know we put frozen right at the end or we try and put that as near to the end of the shop as possible because you want to get your frozen stuff last and you probably wouldn't think about yeah. that but there are other things as well you know we try and put the most popular items right in front of your eyes at eye level so you can just grab and get it and then higher up tends to be a little bit more expensive a little bit nicer and then if you go down a bit it tends to be more bulky items um just because it's heavy really so you you want to put them at the bottom um so it's things like that i guess also having fresh so nice produce you know grapes apples as soon as you walk in the store that tends to make people feel like they're in a this kind of store they want to be in um mm -hmm. and you tend to get better feedback with that kind of thing so we're constantly asking customers you know what do you want when you come in the store what is it that you're looking for we use the club card you know everyone has a club card now club card data to do that yeah okay uh, yeah i mean i think i think that's absolutely fascinating and say so everything happens for a reason uh, when you go into a tesco store um the fact that my children can't necessarily grab all the chocolate bars is probably a good thing as well. So that's because of you that you position them higher up. Then thank you very much for doing that. Um, also interested by you saying that there are variances between different stores as well. So, so perhaps yeah. the Brookfield farm down in Cheshire might have a slightly different layout to the one in, in Stevenage. So tell us a little bit more. How does that work? Totally. So if you go into a few different stores now, try and you probably wouldn't have noticed, but if you try and work out, you can, you'll be able to see there are differences. So um, some stores, for example, central London, really busy stores where you've got people with maybe quite a lot of money, but they want a lot of ready meals. They want things straight away. So you'll have lots of space given to ready meals, lots of like plant based, you know, all these vegan alternatives, um, because that's the kind of customer that we're getting in those stores. And then maybe you go somewhere a bit more rural or with a maybe a more elderly population and you have a more um, a kind of different layout. They don't want ready meals. They want their normal cans and produce and grocery that, that they're used to. Um, so I guess they're also, you know, we try and make sure that Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, Easter, we change everything again. So we're getting a load of new products. We give more space at Christmas. You'll see the whole store goes almost to Christmas. You get stuff on the shelves right up above. Um, so yeah, it's, 
lots of rundowns. Yeah. Okay, and uh, are you something of an expert? Is it sort of a party trick of yours now that someone can say, store in Middlesbrough, and you'll say, oh yeah, aisle four is cleaning products there? <laughs> Not quite. There are people in my team that have been here maybe 30 years and they can definitely do that. It's, I think one thing is people do tend to stay a long time because they love it and they love what they do and they get into it and you do become an expert um, yeah. in your area. So, yeah. yeah, sure. Okay. And I mean, do, do all four of you, and any, anyone can answer this question, do, do you all feel that you're part of this sort of much bigger process with Tesco that you've got your own individual jobs and your own individual teams but I mean ultimately from what you've all described there is it's all around trying to enhance that customer experience so is, is that something you feel that you're part of that bigger yeah massively I think I think it's it's I don't know I I might be wrong but I don't know anyone in Tesco who could tell you what every team of Tesco does um I I think it's it's huge right and ultimately it's all towards that kind of same purpose of kind of I, I think that the actual purpose now is something like helping our uh, customers, colleagues, community and planet a little, a little better every day, something along those lines. And it really does all, all feed into that. Although you're all kind of doing varied different things and different projects, it's all kind of got the same kind of core principles at heart, which is nice because like whoever you speak to, whatever they're doing, although it's different, it's kind of contributing to, to what you're doing or trying to kind of achieve in a way, which is quite cool. Yeah. Yeah, no, I understand. Okay, well, look, that's a really nice segue, Tom, actually, into this number of questions I want to ask about what it's actually like working for for Tesco. So we just looked at that sort of big picture there and the big purpose there. Um, we're talking principally about the site that's in Welling Garden City. That I said, everyone watching this one, particularly those of you watching this in Hertfordshire, Welling Garden City is very accessible for you. Um, you could probably all get there within with, within half an hour if that was your place of work. Um, so. Tom, you were saying that one of the things that you liked most about working on you know, the Welling Garden City site is that it actually feels a bit like a university campus. So explain a little bit about that physical environment when you drive into Shire Park. Yeah, sure. So when you first drive in, in the middle is what we call the heart building, um, which is kind of at the centre. And then there's almost like a kind of ring road around it where you've got, I don't know exactly how many, but maybe 10 kind of buildings across it. Um, and it's got, got such a nice feel to it. It's, it's nice and green. There's like lots of different cafes and kind of restaurants around, loads and loads of kind of collaborative workspaces um, and nice social areas as well. Like there's a football pitch and kind of a netball court um, and stuff like that. And it's just it's just a really kind of nice place to be. Um, the whole the dress code is kind of a bit more relaxed. Like obviously I'm not in a suit today. I mean, some people can be, but it's kind of how you feel comfortable um yeah it's just got a really relaxed nice feel to it i'd say yeah and then for or kian or elena i think you, you're both there today as well yeah. what, what is it that makes you want to go into work every day what is it about that physical environment that that's, that's impressive you go kian <laughs> all right um yeah i think it's um after after like going through covid and stuff it's nice to be able to kind of split the week up i think it's not mm. taken away from the from Shire Park for a minute, it's like the collaborative spaces you have and being able to come in and work with your team completely provided for. Like, So I'm sat in like these new booths that they've put around the office so you can kind of take your phone call away because they've opened up a lot of the office so people can work with each other, sit down, have meetings, go for lunch, um, kind of brings it all together. And yeah, I think because we're all in different, I, I think we might all work in different buildings on on Shire Park. So I, don't, I won't speak for everyone, but yeah, my building's got like a, a Costa Coffee in it, nice kind of foyer area where there's spaces if you wanted to kind of informal catch up. Then there's meeting rooms if you're having a, a formal discussion that you needed a monitor for. So I think it just kind of tends to all your needs in a way, work from a work perspective, um, and it makes it. Yeah. It doesn't make it a chore coming into work especially knowing that you have the option to work at home as well so it's quite it, it seems like a, a little bit of a luxury sometimes to come in i think sure yeah i love coming in um, it, no it's it's great i think just to see all your colleagues and actually work with other people that's what makes it enjoyable especially when you have a good team and you get on with each other and you can sort of bounce ideas back and forth a bit um 
Yeah. Okay. Now, Zina, you're um, located down in the Farringdon office today, but I know you've got access and you, you do occasionally come up to Wellington City. Um, what's the, the differences between the two do you notice and what would be important to you when you were trying to choose somewhere to work? Uh, for me, uh, I think the biggest difference between the Valvin campus and this building is that like in Valvin, as Tom mentioned, it's like university campus with lots of buildings. Uh, but in comparison, the London office is one standalone building in uh, London, so it's very central London. It has got very good connections to like tube lines, King's Cross is, I, I think, like a 25 minute walk from here. So, and uh, let me think. Oh, yeah, we are actually spoiled here. I mean, I know that we've got heavily subsidized cost that are created in Valley, but we've got a very uh, nice and uh, beautiful coffee free coffee machine. And we have access to free drinks like this. This is a some uh, some was it? Well, I think it's like Fanta or something. So and also in the building we've got, for example, I think an Xbox. And I actually saw people use it after work. So it's like we are a very very sociable group of people. We sometimes hang out after work to like play games a little bit. And also I think uh, when it comes, we are talking about environment, I think the most important uh, and what makes us really unique for me is that uh, the inclusive like culture, working culture we have. So people in here, so I, I notice that usually everyone I talk to are really like take pride in what they are doing and they are willing to like share that knowledge they have. So I think yeah, building is one thing and it's beautiful, but what makes it exceptionally good is I think the people I get to work with. Yeah, okay. So it sounds like a really nice place to work. It sounds like a very sort of comfortable um, physical environment and there's, there's lots of opportunities there to collaborate and, and work with other people. And it just got me thinking, Elena, whilst you're thinking about the right spaces to put things in, in stores, there's probably someone within your HR department who's given a lot of thought to the best places and spaces to, to put people and their teams as well to, to, to get the best out of them. Definitely. Yeah. Um, okay. So look, I've, I've hopefully we're, we're selling Tesco as a really good company to, to to come and work for here. So let's just move the conversation on to think about the ways that you can can go in. So, Kian, you've explained to us that you left school after your A levels and you went immediately onto an apprenticeship program at Tesco. Yeah. So, just just take us back. What what was your thought process when you were doing your A levels? So there'll be people who are watching this at the moment who will perhaps just be about to embark on A-levels or they'll be a little bit further down there but what why did you want to choose an apprenticeship program first of all perhaps even before you thought about Tesco? Yeah um, it's a good question because I was pretty sold on an apprenticeship before I even had to think about university I, I submitted a UCAS, a UCAS form but I, I didn't really put any thought to it um, I was kind of decided after my A-levels that I knew that there was more opportunity now to kind of take that take that forward and as long as I got the right opportunity I, I wouldn't settle for something but kind of I, I think I'd applied for about 40 apprenticeships and, and was offered this and another one and the choice was already kind of made for me from coming in and seeing it and I mean I, I'm not too sure I won't talk for everyone but when I was at sixth form we got quite a lot of support kind of opportunity to attend sessions like this and it kind of hearing from other people made me kind of decide that I would, I'd kind of go to university and not, I mean, the degree was, it was quite, it was nice. It was a nice thing to think about, but because I knew I wanted to go into kind of accounting finance, I could go and start studying to be an accountant straight out of A-levels. And it kind of, for my kind of progression and development, it, it, it made a bit more sense in my head. And I'm glad that I've done it because it's, it's it's put me on a on a good path of I'd like to I'd like to think. Sure. And where did you find the apprenticeship vacancy? You said there were lots that you applied for overall. Was where where did you find those positions? Um kind of assortment of, of LinkedIn, um Indeed, and then kind of I kind of was looking on different sort of forums. I, I can't remember the names off the top of my head. I, I can try my best to find them. But um, I thought I actually found the Tesco one through exploring like on Google. It was literally I searched up finance apprenticeships and it okay. Tesco was the kind of the top one that came up. So that was kind of off the beaten track a little bit. I had to kind of find it through through that. But yeah, I found it. and the the kind of application process was was pretty pretty friendly and it, you didn't get bored of it. And there was kind of light numerical tests 
because you were applying to the finance course, but it wasn't anything to kind of pick you off. And I think that's sure. that's quite a, a an important thing when you're going through them application processes because some of them you you'd be sat there for three hours answering the same question just wrote differently three times and it's it can yeah. get a bit draining especially when you're trying to balance in my case a levels or university um, and try and in the evenings and stuff like that apply to them so i think it was overall quite a friendly process once i came across it sure okay um so give you an example of someone who came straight in having done your a levels now Elena, you obviously came in as a as a graduate. So, first of all, tell us about your degree that you did, and then to, did you find Tesco or did Tesco come and find you? How did it work? So, I I did my A levels, and all I wanted to do at that point was go to uni. So, I did that. I studied French and history, which is not relevant at all to what I do now, but that didn't matter. When I graduated, had no idea what I wanted to do. So I applied for loads of different things. And the business scheme was really, is really great because you can try out lots of different things. And if you have a, you know, a degree that isn't specific in management or business or finance or something like that, the business scheme will allow you to just try out marketing, so allow you to be in space like I am or technology or whatever. Um, maybe not tech, but online. Um, so that's why I did that. And I think it worked out really well for me because I have another year and I get to do whatever I want. So, um, sure, yeah. yeah. Okay, um, Tom, hopefully I'm not taking you back too far here to try and remember what the recruitment process was like. So from the first point of you seeing the job advert to actually being offered the, the job, can you can you remember and talk us through that process? I might get this slightly wrong, but I, I think I've got a, a good picture um, because I was similar. I was applying to a few different kind of roles at the time, but it was something along the lines of so I kind of saw saw the role, um, filled out kind of basic information, um, kind of name, address, all that sort of stuff. Um, and then was I think I attached my CV and then might have been like a bio um, to write about yourself um, and then was invited to do some tests. So they were just like, I think they were kind of like some personality based stuff. Um, and then after that, I had a video interview, which is very interesting because it's like pre-recorded questions. So it's like a, a, a video pops up of someone like, uh, I don't know, give me an example of when you've worked well in a team and then you've got 30 seconds to prepare and then you have kind of two minutes or three minutes to answer. Um, and I did make a faux pas in my video interview, I remember. Um, they asked me about my favorite technology product and I was talking about an Apple Watch. And I was like, I love my Apple Watch. And at the time I had the Sainsbury's down the road um, that I use sometimes and I said, oh, it's so good. For example, when I'm in my local Sainsbury's, I can just tap it. And I was like, oh no, I mean Tesco. But um, clearly they either didn't notice or didn't mind too much. Um, and then after the video interview, it was like an assessment day. Um, which for me was virtual um, and that was kind of a nine till uh, four thirty sort of um, setup where you had a couple of group tasks and a couple of individual interviews um, largely around assessing you as a person it wasn't really about your past experiences it was more just like are you going to be a good fit for us and are they going to be a good fit for me as well um, and then after that yeah it was fortunate enough to kind of have an offer but one thing I, I found really impressive is regardless of whether you got an offer or not, everyone got a feedback call. So even if you didn't get the job, someone would take time to have kind of 15 minutes to talk you through kind of maybe why you didn't do it and kind of how you can improve. And everyone who did get the job, they could feel like I had areas where they were like, you were great in here. These areas you could improve, which was super, super nice. Um, yeah. And yeah. And that was kind of the timeline was quite interesting. So I actually applied for the job the September before. So I started September 2021, um, yep. but I applied in September 2020. Um, okay. And then I got offered the job in kind of February. So it happens a long time kind of before. And I think that's the same for most grad schemes. It's that kind of September to October window the year before um, is when they seem to open. Yeah. So was the offer dependent on you getting a particular grade in your degree at the end so, of it? So I'd actually um, already graduated. Um, so okay. I was planning. So I finished my master's in September 2020. Yeah. So and yeah. I already knew, knew what I've got. 
Yeah, I see. Okay. And then, well, Zine, the same question for you. Did they were they testing your competencies as a as a software engineer as part of the process? Yes, I had some coding assessment, uh, but I, I was fortunate because I got to choose which programming language I would like to use for that. And uh, actually, what I liked is that the school is not uh, like looking for someone uh, who's like uh, coding experience is like uh, in a specific like coding language because uh, the one I was interviewing in was completely different from one uh, the one I was I'm using like today. But uh, they rather uh, recruit on the basis of like whether you are going to be able to learn something new. So they uh, mostly recruit for potential, not uh, for uh, actual skills that you actually have at the moment. Because I mean, like uh, these skills like coding, it can develop, but they more uh, focus on your abilities to learn and uh, abilities as a person, like how you come across as so, uh, example, um, empathic, someone who communicates well. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So I'm probably I'm going to, I'm, I'm fairly I'm going to ask Elena this question, um, but the rest of you might have an opinion on this one. So you've all described that you've done very very you do very different jobs. There's clearly very different technical skills um, that are required. Um, you've come in at different points of your career, so either of having straightened from school in Kean's case, um, having graduated from university. Are there any general skills or qualities, Elena, that you know that Tesco always look for for individuals, regardless of the type of job that they do? Yeah, so I think Zena sort of touched on it, but just that willingness and that openness to learn. So if you can find yourself in any role, in any place, doing anything, and you'll just have a really can-do attitude, um, willing to ask questions and curious, I think that really helps. And I think that's one of the things that they were recruiting for. Um, the, you know, whenever you start somewhere new, you have to ask lots of questions and you have to be willing to just say, I don't know, I don't understand that sometimes. So if you have that, I think it really helps generally, but also it's something I think they look for. Um, I think it, secondly, the other thing is just about being a good communicator, someone that you can work with, you know, a good team player. Um, that doesn't mean that you can't lead sometimes, sometimes you need to lead a team, but also you can work with lots of different people, which is what work is all about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I mean, Kian or, or Tom, have you got any observations? Do you sort of look around at some of your, your colleagues and the wider teams and think, do you know what, it's strange that everyone I speak to, they're always really good at doing this or they've, they've always got this quality about them? Yeah, I'd, I'll i jump in. I'd, um, I'd probably say resilience is a big one that I didn't really think about um, kind of on the face of it, but in, in, in a company like this, there's so many kind of review points and, and places your work has to go. And, and sometimes you will be told that this isn't what we're expecting or not that this isn't right, but this isn't how we were kind of understanding it. And um, as a kind of graduate, well, we're, yeah, in, in our cases, as a graduate, it's, um, it can kind of be a bit emotionally, in, in some cases, it probably could strain strain on you a little bit and, and that resilience will allow you to kind of bounce back and and see the lot see the the good in that situation and kind of learn from it um and make sure you kind of yeah you take it as a development step and don't be put down about it okay flex and cool. kind of yeah flex, flexibility as well you've got to make sure you can work around I guess the business requirements and your manager and anyone else that kind of you're working with and yeah okay fine um well look, we're, we're coming to the point of the webinar now where we want questions to come in from the from the people watching in the audience so like, there's a couple that have come in already which i'm which i'm going to ask and they're really good questions so if you're watching this live at the moment and you want to ask a question and find out a little bit more about any of the jobs that you've heard about or just that general wider culture of working for tesco then do put it into the questions tab now i'll, I'll have time to ask to ask all of them. Um, so the first question, this didn't come to anyone in particular, but it's, it's around a business type job. So I'm going to go to um, to Elena, first of all. So the question is, I think it's a really good one. Do you think it would be good for me to get a part time job in my local Tesco school, store to gain experience before applying to do a business type job at Tesco? So the answer depends. Now, for me personally, I had experience of working at checkouts, not at Tesco, um, while I was at school. And I did that in the holidays. And I was lucky because I could just do it in the holidays and I didn't have to do it in term time. So it didn't impact my studies. So it depends how good you are at balancing work and studying. For me, I couldn't have done both at the same time. 
but it is really helpful if when you come to interview you can say I have experience of working in the store because that is the core of everything Tesco does and even on this grad scheme we spend at least two weeks working in store um, just to get an experience of it and it really does help just cement and just so you know what you're doing and everything that you do in head office will impact someone directly in store so if you can balance it I would say yes and it's not going to impact your studies too much it's not going to make you too stressed out it's really good experience sure okay um tom any any thoughts on that would you recommend someone it would be good for them to sort of see behind the curtain first yeah definitely i think i i think it's one of those if, if you don't get the opportunity to don't worry too much but if you do it it's definitely helpful like so i personally got four weeks in store um that i literally did last month and learn so much about how the business works and kind of from a customer you see like a tiny tiny part of everything that goes on behind the scene and i think regardless of your role in store you get a bit more insight to that um i think when kind of interviewing if, if you have worked in store it'll help you kind of understand the business more i also know a lot of people end up kind of getting promoted from stores into kind of head office roles so it, it, it's not necessarily one of those you just work in store then you can kind of apply for this like you could kind of work your way up that way as well um so yeah de definitely worth and apart from anything as as far as those sort of jobs go it's fantastic tesco is a great company to work for um everyone i met in store seemed to kind of really like their role so yeah i'd check it out yeah okay um i'm good i just kind of thought of a question i'm going to combine it with one that that's come in so it's a really really good question that's come in here which is what do you think the most exciting job at tesco is so of, of all the many jobs out there if you could pick one of them what would it be and let me just link in what i was just thinking there about any internal roles that may be available so if there was one job that you could do that looked really really exciting what would you what would you want to do so kieran let me go to you first on that one are we talking are we talking in finance or any any job? No, any anything within the in the Tesco universe. Okay. I would I'd probably say something similar. So I know that Tom works with like Tesco Labs and I think there's quite a lot of innovation that goes on there and I think that would be quite interesting to see. I don't know where I fit in it to be honest, but um I think I just know that there's quite a lot of interesting things that spoke about rumoured around around the around the offices so I think that would be quite interesting to see. Yeah okay yeah Zena? Uh, so for engineering is even a question sorry I mean that uh, for example working on the website has the uh, what I really love about is that I know that uh, so many users are reaching that page every day so it's like whatever I do has an actual impact on so many customers. Yeah yeah see that uh, uh, Elena what would you do you pick any job at all? So one of the great things about working at Tesco is that you can you just you can see into all the different other areas and we had a talk from someone in the innovation team and essentially what they do is they look for the next big thing that's coming so they try and see what Amazon doing what is everyone else doing and they try and you know get some new ideas get people to come to us and pitch their new projects and I think that would be really cool. Yeah okay and then Tom well according to Keen you already do the most exciting job in tesco at the moment but anything else that sort of piques your interest oh it's a good one so i i like i like the technology i'm a tesco i'll be honest so um maybe like the kind of the chief technology officer or something like that because then i think um the, the kind of labs part comes into that but also kind of all the tech across the business um because it's so varied i think that'd be that'd be cool yeah Okay, all right. And then this, this is the lot. Unless anyone submits a question, this is probably the last one we're going to ask. And I knew this one was going to come in. And it's, do you get discounts on your shopping from Tesco? In fact, well, just talk a little bit wider than that. You don't have to answer that question directly if you, if you don't want to. I'm probably not a trade secret. Are there any other sort of great perks that you you get that Tesco offers an employer? So, um, Elaine, let me go to you first of all. Um, really good perks. Yeah, I think you are definitely encouraged. You want to shop in Tesco anyway. It's not just because of the discount. You want to see what you've been working on and point out all the things that you've changed and, you know, you've been doing. Um, other great perks. Yes, there are quite a few sort of vouchers, you know, money off, going out, things like that. Um, it's not really the reason why I come to work, though. It's not what 
what you end up wanting to go to Tesco for, I think, although it's just a nice add on. Don't know if anyone else can think of any other. Part. Go on, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll spill, I'll spill the beans. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's, yeah, there's, there is loads to say. You get discount on your shopping. Um, there's a gym, there's a quite a, quite a good gym as well at Shire Park. Uh, mm. You get subsidised, so it's through Nuffield Health. Um, Costa Coffee are one of our retail partners, so I think there's like five or six around the campus, and it's like a pound for a latte. That's quite good as well. Um, what else is there? There's like a uh, cycle to work scheme as well. That's quite good. If you live in Hertfordshire, um, Tesco will allow you to like deduct from your pre-tax wages to buy a bike if you wanted one, and you'd be able to ride that into work and then um, kind of get it off your pre-tax so you'd actually say from a, a tax perspective um sure. but yeah i mean like that's kind of headlines i mean day to day we'd all we'd all think different things are are perks to us i think yeah 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 okay um right Zena or tom anything you wanted to add on there that you want to share with anyone about i think i, th I think a big perk for me um, it might it might not directly be a perk, but it's the amount of time Tesco let me spend training. Um, <laughs> so kind of away from my day job, I've attended like conferences that have literally nothing to do with kind of my day job, but it's just really interesting and kind of personal development. There's all sorts of internal workshops and stuff like that that my manager is perfectly happy to be like, oh, don't worry about kind of coming to these meetings today, kind of focus on that. Um, and that to me is like a huge perk because that's like a lot of kind of company time they're kind of sacrificing um and every single time i've come forward and be like can i do that it's always been yes so far so that's been a big one yeah. for me yeah. No, yeah for me one of the benefits is like uh, within an organization every fourth friday you are allowed to work on not what is basically your, your day job but you can uh, use that uh, working day to invest in yourself for example if you are working on some project for yourself like one day, um, once i was doing some like browser extension form just purely for myself for fun so uh, we can do it uh, in business time for sure well, okay so cool. you're given the opportunity to go and explore other areas of the business and yeah okay well look I think that probably concludes where we are. That was a really, really positive message to um, you know, to end on as well. And you, you've all really sold Tesco as a place to work here. Um, so just in conclusion, um, Tom, I'm not going to ask all of you to do this, so I'm going to hand it to, to Tom. Tom, if you were 15 years old again, um, what would be the most important thing that you'd want to know about working for Tesco and why that would be a really good career choice for you? Okay, I, I guess you can do anything in Tesco. If if you want to be a software engineer, if you want to decide what chocolate we sell, if if you want to kind of work with people, you can you can do everything. And also, when you join, if you're in one function, there's opportunities to move to other functions if you want. So I think the ultimate thing is when you've got a company this big who genuinely cares about its people, it's just a great place to be, um, and it allows you. You're not a number here; you're actually a person, and you can kind of contribute in in your own way and make a big impact so yeah that's the, the the flexibility and the kind of support tesco give you would be the big one for me hey tom that was a fantastic answer anyone would think that i'd prepared you in advance for that one but i've just thrown that <laughs> on you right now and you you come up with an a star answer so i'm sure uh, members of your hr team uh, sitting up in tesco towers would be delighted with the answer that you just gave there um so on your screen at the moment just in conclusion the uh, qr code right in the middle there if you click on that that will take you straight through to the tesco careers website so they've got a career section within the tesco website so you could go and have a little bit of an explore a bit of research to find out about some of the the roles that are available um, within the organization the qr code in the top left hand corner will take you through to our virtual encounters page on the hop website that i've mentioned to you right at the very start of the webinar so on there you could find out about um or you could go and watch back any of the previous webinars that we've run <coughs> excuse me over the last couple of years we've, we've covered 50 different jobs so this is the first one where we've done an employer specific one but you may well find that there are lots of related jobs um to the to the types of roles that we've discussed this afternoon so do go and have a look through at those i'm sure there'll be something on there that's of interest to you as well if you don't already please do have a look at our hop social media 
platforms that are displayed on your screen there. Do make use of the website as well. We, so we really do hope that it's a really good website to provide really good inspiration and information about careers in Hertfordshire. We've got a focus there on some of our key employers. Tesco are one of our featured spotlight employers on there as well. So let me just conclude by thanking um, those of you in the audience that have come in, you come in from school, you've turned on this webinar and you come in and watched it. So well done for using your time really effectively. Thank you to anyone who's watching this retrospectively on the YouTube channel as well. But most of all, let me thank our four fantastic panelists today who have been such great advocates and ambassadors for Tesco. Uh, so hopefully you found them in, in, informative and inspirational as well today. So Zena, Tom, Elena and Kian, thanks so much for giving up your time today. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. And yeah, if I wish the rest of you all the very, very best with your future career choices. Thank you.